Hallelujah, hallelujah. Once again, we are here bringing the word, the message to you. I'm the Reverend Dale Smith here at First Central Baptist Church, the world's greatest church. God is able to do just what he said he would do. He's going to provide all his promise to you. Don't give up on God, cause he won't give up on you. He's able, oh, 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 oh. God is able to do just what he said he would do. He's gonna fulfill every promise to you don't give up on god cause he won't give up on you he's able hey, hey, hey. he's able he's able yes he's able he's able yeah he's able Oh, God is so able, don't give up on God, because he won't give up on you, he's able. Wise and eternal Father, we are thankful one more time to be in your presence, oh my God, and stand behind his presence. Sacred death, oh my God. Remove me, oh my God. Replace me, oh my God, with the Holy Spirit, oh my God. Allow this humble servant, oh my God, to bring a word through you at all times. We glorify your name in all places and spaces. In the name above all names, in Jesus' name we say, amen, amen. Well, hallelujah, saints. Hallelujah. Once again, it's on. It is your man, the Reverend Dale Sheldon Smith, coming from Fresh Baptist Church. I'm here with my main man, Reverend Sam, on the IT, the IT guru. I want to say thank you. To our wonderful shepherd who allows this opportunity, that's the Reverend Dr. Demetrius S. Carolina, to my queen, to my heart, to my love, Cynthia Smith, who gets me going, keeps me going, and allows me to go out and come bring the word every once in a while. So I want to say thank you to the ministry circle, thank you to the deacons, thank you to the trustees, thanks to all officers in church, but thank you to you, you, and you, my father's children. Today's subject is one I think I've been wanting to talk about for a while, but I had the opportunity. But we're going to read scripture first. We're going to stay strong. Scripture I'm coming out is Philippians, the second chapter, the first to the fifth verse. I'm reading the NIV translation and go and read thusly. Therefore, if you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from his love, if any common sharing in the spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete by being like-minded having the same love, being one in spirit and of one mind. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourself, not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of others. In relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus. For a little while today, we're going to talk about kingdom impact for the next generation. So at first, I want to give a definition of kingdom impact. First thing to note down, the kingdom impact is the expression often used among Christians to hint at the power of God to affect spectacular impression changes on earth. The kingdom is the church. I said the kingdom is the church. Family of God. Impact means to have an influence or strong effect on someone or something to make an impression upon something or someone. The church wasn't created to be a country club, hmm. but a driven movement of believers living on a mission. We want the local church to flourish and we're for all gospel centered churches. We want to have an impact our own lives, our own homes, our own communities, our own nation and the world. See, Jesus was criticized for associating with marginalized, rejected and the powerless. See, that's why your attitude should be the same as that of Jesus taking the very nature of a servant. Christ Jesus came to show that the real purpose of power, the real purpose of power, I said the real purpose of power, that is not to be served, but to serve and therefore be agents of a positive change in the world. What are you talking about? But I'm talking about how you should be if you want to make an impact in God's kingdom for the next generation. 
that you should be a servant. And I'm gonna make a couple of points and then I'm gonna get out your way. But that first point, you gotta be willing to make an impact. The first thing you may be a little hard for you because you gotta be willing to step out of your comfort zone, step out of your living room, step out of that church. You have to step away from that formula of practices from time to time and allow the people of our cities to see groups of us believers actively playing a part in the community. You see, we're supposed to be part of the community. We're supposed to be out there in the front. First Peter, that fourth chapter, that 10th verse reads thusly, as every man have received the gifts, even so the minister the same one to another as good stewards, the manifold grace of God. What this means is that we all have a spiritual gift that God has graciously given to us. He's given supernatural tendencies. Each believer has a specific gift, the abilities that the Lord has given each of us to minister. Let me say that again, that God has given us. It's not ours. So that's why we're stewards. So therefore, that gift of the Spirit that has been given to us of God is called a gift of the Spirit. These gifts were given to us at the time we need for them to minister with. This is willing, are you willing to do that? today to help the kingdom are you willing to use your gift that god has given you what does that gift could be it could be singing it could be preaching it could be teaching but mainly that gift is serving that's the gift god's given you are you good stewards to that gift that god's given you so you can be willing to give and make an impact on this next generation and show them what kingdom building is let me pause there for a moment many times in our community we're talking about what young people are not doing but what are we doing Yes, I'm in youth, Bill. I've been working with youth for over 25 years, but we all interact with the next generation. Whether it be millennials, Generation Z and beyond, we're working with the next generation. But we're saying, we're saying we're growing, we say we're moving, and we say we're committed to kingdom building. How are we taking our gifts and impacting the next generation? Are we showing them the gift of teaching? Are we showing them, as we teach, are we showing them that love? As we preach are we preaching in love are we serving in love you see the christians today we are keepers of the grace of god toward man on this earth and how we're portraying that to the next generation that's attractive to young people it's attractive to anybody isn't it that if somebody's using their gift for god's purpose or somebody say his name that you're using your gift for the purpose of god how powerful is that using your gift for the purpose of god why it seems simple is not because many people have their gifts and think it's theirs, but it's not. God gave it to you. If you got awesome voice, that's God. If you can play the piano, that's God. If you can play guitar, that's God. If you can duck like Michael Jordan, guess what? That's God. God gave it to you. We give him back to, to this kingdom. That's a moment right there to pause and think about that. What are you using that gift for? Is it just for financial gain? Or are you saying thank you, God? Showing that gratitude, showing that that gift, you know, comes from him, that he's blessed you beyond your comprehension. And so many people are walking around with so many great gifts. I see them all over the church. I see them in the community, but not realizing who you got it from. God wants you to be willing to give that gift to his kingdom. That's impactful. Willing to give it to his kingdom. And that's what Christians are supposed to do. But also... I go to my second point, you got to be present. See, in the gospel, we find Jesus doing what? He was among who were the people. He wasn't hiding away. He wasn't going to retreats. Jesus always seemed to be smack dab in the middle of the pulse of the community. Are we smack dab in the community doing what Jesus did? Is our walk in unison with the pulse of our community? That's where it should be. Do we think outside of the church? And that's what the next generation is looking for. That's what the next generation is. A lot of them are outside the church for those reasons. Outside the walls because we have not been present in their lives. You haven't been to shooting responses. You haven't been to protests. You have not been there. And it's not me coming at you, me saying that what God is asking you to do with your gift. And being present, you need to be there. You see, Ephesians at fifth chapter, the fifteenth verse tells us: See then that walk circumstantially, not as fools, but as wise. If we're wise, we're living a moral life. 
were not unwise men were living circumstantially. See, a fool wanders around on the broad path that leads to destruction, but a believer begins his new life in Christ with all wisdom necessary to live for his Lord. To live for his Lord. To be present and live for your Lord. Is that great? Of course it's great. Can we do that? This is the impact we're looking for on the young people for the next generation. I were willing to walk circumstantially, not as fools, but as wise men, because we're walking with the, with the king of kings. And we're continually growing in wisdom. I want to grow, Reverend Sam, a little bit more wiser. Not richer, because wiser, because I got wisdom. My grandmother, Asaj, she always told me, she said, boy, pray for wisdom. And when I used to call her mom, I said, mom, what do you mean? She said, pray for wisdom. If you got wisdom, you got it all. I say amen to that. And that's what the penman who was Paul in Ephesians is saying the exact same thing as my grandmother. He's saying his service is wise to follow on a narrow path that leads to heaven. That narrow path that leads to heaven is where we should be. That's wisdom. And therefore it's present. But if I'm leading that narrow path, I got to walk the narrow path. Young people see me walking that narrow path. I'm not getting high. I'm not doing dirt. I'm not cheating on my wife. I'm doing what God has me to do. It's giving God's will. They're going to follow me. Because I'm following him. I'm present. Doing what God has me to do circumstantially. Not as a fool, but a wise man. Not me. Because that gift he gave me. I'm wise enough to use it purposely. Will somebody say his name? So, I say also, be consistent. Be consistent. Be consistent. It's not an easy thing to be consistent all the time. So you can't be holy one day. And hell, better, and hell raise the next day. You can't do it. You got to be holy every day. And when days you're not holy, maybe you should stay home. I'm, I'm playing. I'm, not, I'm messing with you. But the bottom line is what I'm saying to you guys is that God wants you consistently to help build his kingdom. And the people outside that don't know God are looking for the same thing. They're looking for that consistency. Look at Think about consistency. Look back. Look how consistently God is always consistent in your life. How consistently has he given you great things? How consistently has he done wonderful things for you? How could you not build in his kingdom be consistent for him? First Peter 3.15 tells us, Sanctify the Lord God in our hearts. Be ready always to give an answer to every man that ask of you for a reason of the hope that in you we are meekness and fear. We're talking about apologetics here, and as you know, I've talked about that on several occasions, urban apologetics. There are people in our community telling are full of cults and false doctrine to tell the young people in the next generation that God does not exist. They're telling him there's white man's Christianity. They're telling them that they're not really there's no God at all. They're telling young people not to follow Christian that the, the church is dead. We, we have to be defenders of the gospel. We have to say, call it for what it is. It's false doctrine. It's lies. Not only there's a God, there's an the everlasting king, a living God. His name is Jesus, and he's doing miraculous things in our community right now. But they have to see it. Young people want to touch and feel what God is doing. They touch and feel through you. You're that defense. You're that answer. You're that person that they want to see God through you. And that's what we have to do. Not just some people, but all of us to say we love God. You imagine if you really love somebody who saved you, would you defend them? Think about what Jesus has done for you. Look at your life prior to you being saved. Oh, hallelujah. I, I know for me, I'm going to keep on the eye that it's so much better. So much better now than I was before. So I'm totally committed to the Lord in my heart. And my heart truly means what I am. That's my witness. My walk is my witness that I'm going to serve him for the rest of my life. That I'm not going to be ignorant with his witnessing to others. I'm going to let them know, regardless of who I'm speaking to, they must put their trust in God, that he will say what we need to hear, and he will give us that power. A lot of times people are wondering, what should I say? Say God is great. Say God is love. Say God is light. But say he's the one that changed my heart. He's the one that... My, live, my life is a living testimony of what he can do for me, he can do for you. Just say it. Therefore, that's being consistent. That's being consistent in, the, in God's word. And I want to say for my last point, be the invitation. You be the invitation. So I want you to think about the dopest, greatest gift somebody gave you recently. 
how it looked. It was packaged. It probably had a big bow on it, Reverend Sam. It looked beautiful. It had the colors you like, whether the red, black, and green, blue, and white, yellow, and green, pink, orange. Shout to the pink and orange. Shout to the pink whoever. Shout to the blue whoever. Shout to the red, black, and green. All the colors that you love, but you gave it right in the package. And you say, wow, look how inviting this is. I can't wait to open that package. Are you that same invitation, that same package for the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? Will somebody want to come to you as an inviting, are you that inviting gift? Are you inviting somebody to be part of the kingdom? Or are you that stale, uppity, tight-lipped, not looking, thinking you're better than somebody else? Or are you that invitation? Somebody, God sent somebody to invite to you. Think about your invitation, how it came. But I'm telling you right now, with kingdom, we got the invitation. We have to invite the next generation in to see who the Lord is, to know who he is, to know what a testimony of what a walk can do for us. We have to be the invitation. It has to be an invitation that you would want to get yourself. Think of how the invitation would look if you got it. So I want to say that being we're designed by God and we original design, Therefore, as a new creation in Christ, we are the invitation. We should want to serve because we created to do what? We created to do good works. That was what we created to do. Before I was born, I knew before I was born, sanctified, ordained to do God's work. See, like Jeremiah, God has set aside us on earth for a special assignment. The special assignment, I'm telling you today, is and has been, as the Great Commission asks of us to be disciples of Jesus Christ and to be an impact on his kingdom here on earth until he comes again and bring people to the kingdom. Are you doing this for the next generation? Are you doing this for your next door neighbor? But more importantly, for these young people out in the streets that are shooting, that are dying, that are afraid and are looking for you kingdom builders to come to them and tell them about the great God you serve it's not just that you can stay in this church on the safety of this, these four walls and say you're doing God's work you're not I want to make sure that you're not doing enough I'm not here to criticize I'm here to mobilize I'm here to mobilize the kingdom and make them stronger I'm not asking you to do nothing but to do God's work it's not Dale's work it's God's work God wants you to move God wants your life to be a living testimony so you can change somebody else so you can, they can have what you have the habits of Jesus Christ as their savior you have to want to do that for the next generation don't let the church be an old myth an old wives tale it should be getting stronger and stronger. We need more young people in the church for obvious reasons, but more importantly, say we're here to win souls. I'm never here to win an argument. I'm here to win souls. Will somebody say his name? Somebody say how great God has done. Take action because you're God's masterpiece. Take action because you're his masterpiece. He designed you specifically. As Reverend Sam can play the guitar so lovely, he's a masterpiece to God. That's his gift. That's his talent. So he has to be present. He has to be committed. He has to understand that he, he, as designed by God, you got to walk a certain way. As each of us are your unique creation, we want to use our potential that he created within us. Our kingdom purpose is, bec is becoming a Christian. is isn't just knowing Christ. Our kingdom purpose is not just knowing Christ. Our kingdom purpose is not just knowing Christ it's also about discovering our potential in Christ. Our potential in Christ is to bring somebody else to the kingdom, to be true kingdom builders, to grow, to move, and be committed to kingdom building means that your witness is your invite to the rest of the world. Go out among nations, be disciples. It's time, not tomorrow, but right now. Somebody say hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Amen.